Two American League teams. Tigers on the road as Detroit goes up against the Chicago White Sox. Live on 2K Sports. It's all about the American League, the Chicago White Sox. Sponsored by Pepsi, a chance to check out the Tigers lineup. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, you know, when you look at a lineup and how it's constructed, we always look at it as, so how does he hit? And Brandon Inge at the plate. Last game for the Tigers was a win. So after splitting the first two games, a good outing to finish that series ahead 2-1 to one against the Royals in Kansas City. On well, this ball club's been playing pretty well of late. Six wins in their last ten games. And a lot of this has to do with their patience they're showing at home plate. And a ball to get us underway. And they really have been working the count, waiting for their pitch, and uh, it's paid off. And the last thing you want to do when something is working is change the plan. Stick with it, and they'll continue to win. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. That's called for a strike. It'll even the count at two and two. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Swing and a miss on the slider. One up. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. Carlos Guillen. He has one hit, 12 at bats. Not much lifetime against Peavy. Shots him out with a cut fastball for a strike. Well, one area the Chicago White Sox are looking to see some improvement over 2009 is, is their team defense has got to get better. Here's the delivery. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Back up. So Guillen is set down. And the White Sox defensively, 113 errors, second worst in the American League. You are not going to win baseball games when you're giving up all those extra chances and outs. Well, no, not in that division and not in any division, especially in the American League, where the DH is, is so prevalent because the more at bats you let these good hitters get the top of the order, the middle of the orders, you keep turning the lineup over by making errors, the more chance your pitchers are going to give up a lot of runs. And that's what happened to this oh, Chicago two. White Sox team in 2009. Well, John, in addition to the defense, I mean, they were also last in hits in the American League and near the bottom in extra base hits as well. So, you know, they got multiple oh. components of their team that just didn't perform well enough. Back up the middle. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? And with two down, you've got a man on board. Well, with two outs and no one on base, chances of scoring a run seem pretty scarce, but they get that two-out hit. Now they have some life. Called strike, and Phoebe's got him on one. And you could throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Maglio Ordonez not fooled by that one, and the count is even. He's got one hit, five lifetime at bats off Peavy. On the ground to short, fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first side, is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. And the White Sox. And Jeremy Bonderman gets ready to throw. He's starting for Detroit. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? This lineup has to come into the situation with some confidence right now. A pitcher with nothing overpowering, oh. who they know if he throws it over the plate, they can do some damage. So force him to throw strikes. Damon lays off the low pitch. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. They put together win after win. Now they got seven in a row going. Well, I'll tell you what, these guys are red hot right now. They've rattled off seven straight wins, and they'll be looking for numero ocho here in this one. And Johnny Damon watches that one go by. The count is even. You certainly got to love how they have been playing. They are putting it all together. Well, they certainly have, and there's no reason to believe that this team won't continue. Pitching, defense, offense, they've done it all, and winning seems inevitable. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Well, the Tigers almost claimed the AL Central title in 2009. They played pretty well against division rivals, but they could have used at least one more win. And they 
can't cut it off. It'll roll to the wall. And he's in at second with a double. One out. First base. Number 14, Paul Fernando. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the play, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. And Paul Canerco to bat. Talking about the Tigers against their division, 39 and 34 against the American League Central. Pretty good. Well, really good. And But the fact that they didn't play the Minnesota Twins well, the team that eventually overtook them for that division title in that one-game plan, was a reason why they didn't win this division. The Twins were... The Tigers were 7 and 12 against the Minnesota Twins in 2009. If they can improve on that, they can win this division because it is wide open in 2010. Oh, John, that's exactly it. You look at that matchup against the Twins, and a one game switch in that series would have been the difference between not having to play the Twins in that sort of playoff game to get in. So, you know, it goes back when you look over the course of your year, one game can make such a difference. That one, a one hopper off the wall. And Ramirez is home. You get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. And Beckham's in the box. What we're seeing, and a ground ball, Cabrera. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Early pressure being put on, a run over in the first. The White Sox are leading one to nothing. It's Rayburn at the plate. Center fielder, number 25, Ryan Rayburn. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. It's a nice location with that fastball down in the zone. If he makes contact, it's going to be a ground ball. That one's drilled to short, and Ramirez fields the ball. In time for the up. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. Well, sometimes you just have to force the defense to make a play. You get the bunt down and see what happens. In this situation, worked out for the best. Larish at the plate. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch, 0-1. Boy, that good late movement down, that cut fastball, unbelievable action on that pitch. Called strike below the waist, and he's in the hole now, 0-2. Well, even if the hitter swings at that pitch right there, there's not much he's able to do with it. Swing and a miss, struck him out with a breaking ball, two down. Here's the curve on KK. It was not a good-looking swing on that pitch. Well, good at bats starts with good swings, and bad at bats end with bad swings. I think he'd want that last swing back if he had the choice. Swings at that first delivery, curveball by him on one. Well, sometimes the pitcher's just better than the hitter, and on that particular pitch, he threw that breaking ball down the zone. He was better. So you just tip your hat to him and hope you can get him again. Oh, Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. Well, this broke a little bit too much out of the zone right here for a ball, but he's got to bring it back in. Rain that thing in a little bit. And Conerco makes the catch. No runs on a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The shutout continues in Chicago. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. Alex Rios. And Alex Rios to lead off. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. Bonderman gets him to go after that one, and he missed it. It'll be a strike. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. Horrible pitch, but he went after it. It's a strike. 
Well hit towards the middle. Played by Everett. So Rios is set down. Here are the top batting averages for this month. Our State Farm leaderboard. All of these guys, quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. It's going to be Przinski. Well, A.J. Przinski put together a pretty solid season for the White Sox in 2009, hitting 300. He doesn't strike out a lot. He's a contact guy. You'd like to see maybe drive in a little more runs, only 49 RBIs. But I tell you what, what he does for the pitching staff is something that can't be ignored. And Rayburn's able to get to that one. And a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League rankings. Third in walks, tenth in triples, and they're in the top ten in strikeouts. That pitching staff with quality stuff and great location that throws strikes and works ahead in the count. And Mark Tien up. Great season, top ten in RBIs. And he leaves that one alone. Mark Tien shows patience to even it. 10 for 24 and lifetime opportunities against Bonderman. And that's on the outer half for a strike one and two. A good four seam fastball right there. You have to know yourself. He didn't think he could catch up to it. Better off to take it. There's a swing and a miss, but he's headed for first. And he's out. They get him with that throw to first base. Now, Gary was really going for Taking a look at Jimmy Leland. No doubt right now thinking about getting back to a tie ball game. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Slider in the dirt. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. A two-seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it sets up his other pitches. Ball three. And that one misses outside, and he's behind three and oh. Well, he's up in the count right here, three and oh, and you know he has the green light. As a hitter, you set middle in and try to get something in that zone to generate a run. And Brandon Inge at the plate, and frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. Here's the first pitch. Called strike, and Peavy's got him on one. Oh. Inge isn't fooled by that pitch. The count is evened up. Now, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Strike Trying to hit that one to the parking lot, but missed. One and two. Inge isn't fooled by that pitch. The count is evened up. Oh. Two two curve that misses three and two. Now Przinski positions himself You're out. and in swinging through it strike three. A good pitch right at the knees there. He swung right over the top of it and just couldn't put it in play. Carlos Guillen. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. He swings and lines this one softly towards the left side. And that's going to be a base hit for Guillen. That will bring Miguel Cabrera up. Here's the June schedule for the White Sox. Thursday, they wrap up this Detroit series. They'll kick off a road series with the Cubs. Another division leader. That gets started on Friday. And they get a look at a team from the senior circuit, the Pirates at PNC Park. So they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch. The pitch. Oh, and the fish for that one, nothing and one. Well, this one here with no doubt about it, the late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Miguel Cabrera not fooled by that pitch. That'll even the count. Hit sharply towards the hole. So plate. that's going to put Maglio Ordonez at the plate. Number 30. Opposite field Maglio hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. It's going to be Knicks now. Five, Jason 
Bonderman gets set and delivers. And it's through. That's a base hit. And that'll break Johnny Damon to the plate. Right there in the top five in home runs. Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. Guillen will field. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. And fans, there's the more Chicago baseball Lakers coming this Friday. Shortstop. It'll be Roy Halladay and the Philadelphia uh, Phillies. See. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. Game gets underway 7 o'clock Eastern. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. And Alexei Ramirez was a guy who struggled in the first half of the season for the Chicago White Sox. Got dropped in the batting order. And then in the second half started picking it up a little bit in 2009. Bonderman gets him to go after that one and he missed it. It'll be a strike. Another young star in Alexei Ramirez came out of the uh, Cuban National Baseball line shot into center field. Two down. At the plate for the Chicago White Sox. First base. Now Paul Canerco batting with a runner on first. The leading the league in home runs. Here's the pitch. Has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Throws on to first side is retired. No runs on a hit and they'll strand it. White Sox one, Detroit nothing. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball, I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck. It's Rayburn at the plate. Now the first pitch. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. Okay, they have four hits so far in this one into the fourth inning, but they haven't been able to put them together and, and try to mount any rally. And I think right now the pitcher's getting the job done, making the pitch when he needs to. 1-0 pitch, a slider in there. What a one. Here's the 1-1. Sharp bite to that slider, one and two. Well, this one here with no doubt about it, the late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Got him. One away. Boy, it took four pitches. No wasted time right there, and he got him. What I liked the most was he was very deliberate with what he had to do. He knew he had he can go out of the strike zone to get the punch out, and that's what he did, getting him to swing. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Oh. And that's too low, 1-0. Oh. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out, that two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. Cutter runs too far inside, 2-0. Oh. Oh. Fastball just misses. He runs it to 3-0. and oh. And he gets this one over for a strike three and one. But clearly the hitter had to take sign on right there. He was taken all the way. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. Over to Canerco. That's two gone. Designated hitter number 19. Larish yeah. at the plate. Now coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So got to be seeing the ball pretty well. First pitch to him. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. Rios will field. And that's the third out. That'll do it. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. He keeps the shutout going through four. He's got some run support as well. And it'll be the White Sox. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. And he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance runs so important. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in hits. Bonderman gets him to go after that one. And he missed it. It'll be a strike. 
Pitch on the way. Now swaying in a shot towards second. Though so Quinton is retired. Time to have a look at our league leaders brought to you by State Farm. Team with the most extra base hits. The White Sox number one. The Red Sox in second. The Blue Jays third. The Angels fourth. And it's the Yankees number five. A lot of people think that power is just hitting home runs. But this team dispels that myth. They're not just trying to hit a single the other way. They're trying to drive something the other way. Hit hard to second. Santiago. And Beckham set down. A well hit ball. The second baseman easily takes care of it though. Throws it over. This guy makes it look easy. And he starts Rios out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. It's Laird at the plate. He's our first batter here in the fifth. Gerald Laird. Swing, hot shot, Peavy. That's one away. You have to have quick reflexes on the mound. You're the closest to the hitter of anybody else on the field. The ball got back on him. He was able to make the play, moves his feet to be able to get the momentum going to first base for the throw. Nice job. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch. 0-1. Again, they left four runners on base so far in the game, so they've had a couple of opportunities you know, to be able to try to make something happen, but just have not been able to come up with a big hit or a long ball. He delivers. Oh, Tried wow. to get him to bite, but he lays off outside. One and two. The one two on its way. Oh, that two. fastball misses. Two and two. Swung on and a ground at a first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. That's a nice play at first. Taking care of it himself. Doing a nice job handling the glove. And Brandon Inge at the plate. Lifetime numbers 219 off the White Sox. And Inge settles in for the first pitch. Swings, hits this one in the air down the right field line. And there's Quentin for out number three. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Still unable to score. Detroit still nothing on the board. There's your manager, Jim Leland. And right now, his team trailing by a run, figuring out the necessary pieces of the puzzle to get this thing at least tied up. Leading it off, A.J. Przinski. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. First pitch, here it comes. Bonderman gets him to go after that one, and he missed it. It'll be a strike. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball, and he pulled the string on it, got him a swing right through. So Pruszynski retires. And here are the standings in the Number Central Division, as found on our State Farm standing board. Plenty of time still left in this season. It's the White Sox in first. In the second spot, the Twins. Third, the Royals. The Tigers, fourth place. And down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. Uh, pretty surprising the way this Tigers team has played this year. I think disappointing for the whole organization, for their fans, for the city of Detroit. They thought they'd compete, and they're just not getting it done. No balls. That ball is swung on and hit a long way deep into right center field. Gone a home run. They'll take that one run homer. They need that. Now the lead is two. Oh, Gary, that's a pretty good pitch down in the zone right there, but he was able to go down and get it. This is a lesson learned about this hitter. Apparently, the low ball's not going to go on the ground. Well, the pitcher doesn't like that. He thinks he made a pretty good pitch there. But you're going to have to get it up next time. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. One out, faces him. First pitch. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. 
Steve, a big fly like that at this point in the ball game. You, you start thinking, you know something, we're going to win this ball game. Well, backbreaker, boy, that kind of power shows the other team that, you know what, you always have a chance to catch up or extend your lead. Swung on line to right center field, and he gets it down. He's two for two now. And that'll bring Johnny Damon to the plate. Now Johnny Damon was a key cog for the New York Yankees in 2009. Helped leading them to a world championship. You look at the at-bats, he got on base, he hit home runs, he drove in runs, he scored runs. He's a complete offensive player. And it falls in. Hitting streak continues. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Johnny Damon had to answer his critics last season in New York. A lot of people thought maybe his career was already done. Well, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And, and the fact that he's he's not a hot shot towards the hole. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well, you know he's at an all-time high coming into this game. A big win in their last game. He had three hits to contribute. Things are going great for him right now. And it's Paul Canerco now. And when you got the bases loaded like this, this is the opportunity you look for in a game. It may not come again. Well, when you have a lead, you want to keep adding to it. A big opportunity here to spread the margin. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Canerco now will look to tighten up that zone. Looking to build offensively off his last game where he had a couple of RBIs and trying to carry that into this one as well. The one-two pitch. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. Okay, Cam Register's 87 miles per hour with very little break. RBI opportunity right here for Carlos Quinn. Lifetime numbers 314 against the Tigers. First pitch to Quinton. Drill towards the hole. There's one. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Second baseman. Number 15, Jordan Beckham. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. Hit hard on the ground towards third. Gamble lost. Tagged out on his way to third. Well, they add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox up three. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. First pitch fastball misses badly that time, 1-0. Well, he's doing an outstanding job keeping this offense off the board. And Jano's had a handful of base runners so far in this one. The four runners left on base. But, you know, they've been able to make pitches and make plays when they needed to. Swing and a miss on the slider. One and two. One-two pitch coming. Hit on the ground up the middle. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. That will bring Miguel Cabrera up. Chance here to see the pitching staffs with the lowest ERA for the month. Brought to you by State Farm. The Red Sox number one. White Sox in second. In third, the A's. The Twins fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. You take a look at these pitching staffs and how successful they've been limiting the opposition in runs scored. And that can go a long way to helping a team win. And Cabrera swings and misses at that one. That evens it up. A lot of twos in the numbers. Two for 22 against Peavy. Oh, Curve ball just off the black, and it's two and one. Here's the two one. Cabrera will foul that one away. And that's a ball. PB too far outside with it. Now, Gary, this is a breaking ball down and away, and it just runs off the plate for a ball this time. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Gets one at second, but he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. He makes a nice play to get the lead runner at second base with a strong, accurate throw. Good footwork. They just couldn't get the double play. And one on, and hit sharply towards the hole. 
Now Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Center fielder. For the Tigers, the expectations are not going to be as high as they were, but for Magli Ordonez, the weight's on him because the Tigers have pared back as far as what they're spending, and they're looking for him to again be a key player. He has to pick up the power numbers. If the Detroit Tigers are going to contend in 2010, Magli Ordonez has to get back to that 25 to 30 homer, 100 RBI range. If not, this team is going to struggle like they did in 2009 to score runs and win games. Ball Slider two. can't find the zone. Two and one. The two one pitch. A smash to first, and he steps on first. That's the second out. Two outs now. Those runners are still standing on base. Let's see if he can find his way out of this with the lead intact. The first pitch up the middle gets through. That run's going to score. The throw. He scores. He beats him to the plate. And the Detroit Tigers, wow, what a momentum swing for them. Two runs in on that hit. That's got to help your chances of winning. Here's our Pepsi WPA graph. Steve looked like he had to go down to get that one. That's a, that's a big, tough hit. Well, I tell you, he's battling at the plate. That's an outstanding at bat, the way he goes down on that ball, picking up two big runs here. Larish at the plate. It is a difficult task. You're trying to get back into a ball game at this point, but they're close. Yeah, Gary, we look at pieces of clutch hitting. Well, that's what we just saw right there. I mean, they're still down. They've got to get some more at bats like that, but that was a clutch at bat. Ah, uh, that one's gonna get by, and the runner will advance. The throw easily safe at second. So they can't make the play. Okay, to make the error right there, you just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Now Przinsky positions himself. Oh. Fouled away. PV winds up for the one-two pitch. Ground ball headed for the middle. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They pick up two, three hits, strand a man. Tigers really battling here to get into this game. Here's a look at Ozzie, Ozzie Guillen. He's not happy with his club. He's still out in front, but he knows they cannot afford to have innings like that and still win. And Alex Rios up in the top ten in hits. Bonderman gets him to go after that one, and he missed it. It'll be a strike. Here's the pitch. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Going to have to look for a little bit more patience at the plate in this game. Back up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. That's going to bring up A.J. Przinsky. And coming up for the Tigers, Thursday they will finish up the Chicago series. They get a look at a team from the senior circuit, the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's going to get going on Friday night. Then the next series at home brings in a worthy opponent, the Washington Nationals. So, a lot of home games to look forward to. One of the best batting averages in the league. Runner on first base, nobody out. And the first pitch. There's the swing. This one blasted high, deep center field. And out of here. A home run. Two runs, one swing. Okay, this is the second home run they've hit off him in this game. So when he gets the ball up and makes a mistake, they hit it out. He's got to be thinking about exactly what he threw in those cases and maybe change it up a little. Now, clearly to those guys, he's going to have to do it.
Figaro coming in to hurl as the Tigers decide to bring in a reliever. Well, if it were me, I'd leave the starter in the game. I think it's, you're taking him out too early right now. I'd go to the bullpen a little bit later. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Well, working on the 0-1 count now. Steve, a big fly like that at this point in the ball game. You, you start thinking, you know something, we're going to win this ball game. Well, backbreaker, boy, that kind of power shows the other team that, you know what, you always have a chance to catch up or extend your lead. That one's in the dirt. Nice stop. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And in there, he's two for three today. Now, now the State Farm leaderboard, and look at pitching staffs who have been the hardest to hit in the last ten games. Blue Jays number one, the Red Sox in second, Tigers third, Yankees fourth, and we've got the Twins who are number five. You look at those low opponents' batting averages, those really are the pitching staffs with the best stuff. They're the ones that get the most outs and the most swings and misses and the most pop out. Swings, hits this one very high in the air, deep left center. Hits the wall on the fly. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. Left fielder. Runner on first now for Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon. A look at the numbers in this matchup 3 0 2 against the Tigers. Here it comes. Sliders in there for a called strike. Boy, he's got such great rotation on that slider. It's just unbelievable depth to that pitch. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. When you got a slider pitcher, his greatest fear is that that thing just sits there. This one doesn't. Well, you got to stay on top of the ball and really pull it through, but he does it so very well. Alexi. Well, okay, Cam's going to show us the four seam fastball here. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. Takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. And it's 0 and 2. Alexi Ramirez going to have to protect now. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. And they add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox up three. It's layered at White. Catcher number eight, Gerald Laird. First pitch on the way. A shot up the middle. That should be a base hit. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. Here's the first pitch. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Oh, nine outs to go right now and, and leading by three. I mean, I think you have to start throwing strikes. Just go at the hitters, force them to put in play. Do not give them free passes. Two and, one. and that's the ball. Maybe too far outside with it. Well, the starting pitcher right now is over 80 pitches, and this is a time when the manager and the pitching coach have to keep an eye and see if his velocity is dropping. If it is, you might want to think about getting him out. There's a swing in contact. This one to Damon. One away. Called strike. And PB's got him 0 1. Offensively, now they've got to start to work the count. They've got to try to get base runners on and get things going here. I mean, you've got one out here in the seventh inning. It's not too late to try to make up some of this deficit. Here's the pitch. Good looking fastball. Called the ball, though, 2 and 1. And now the count goes to three and one. Brandon Inge with a hitter's count. Swings at that fastball. Can't make contact. Three two. The three two pitch. Hit up the middle. And he gathers this one. 
And Inge is retired. Too late, and he is safe at second. Well, Gary, he had thoughts about reeling and going to second base right there, but instead just went to first to get the sure out. First pitch, A.B. begins to give. Called strike, and P.B.'s got him on one. Well, I need a big two-out rally right here. Try to see if you keep... Well hit towards the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they pick up a hit, but leave a man at second and fail to score. Loosen him up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. The veteran manager, Jim Leland... The thoughts of a manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. He delivers, and a ground ball, Cabrera. Now State Fire brings you the leaderboard for the highest on base percentage in the league. These guys really understand the nature of the game. They understand that they cannot help the pitcher retire them. They force the pitcher to throw it over the plate. They can put it in play and get a base hit, or they'll take a walk. Here's Carlos Quinton. Here's the delivery. Couldn't get around in time. 0-1. Pitch on the way. Fly ball deep left, but it'll end up in the seats foul. Strike three. Quentin on a swing and a miss. He's out. Well, he's up in the mid 90s now, so pretty good velocity, but not much break on it. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. And here's the first one. First pitch is a slider in there, 0 and 1. Swings, hits this one very high in the air. A soaring drive. Gone, a two-run homer. The lead is five, thanks to that where that ball hit. White Sox lead expanded here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. One out, nobody on. And he starts Rios out. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. One bounce onto the wall. We've got a moment to see the State Farm League leaders in slugging percentage. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing in the back, they can change the score of the game. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Out on the mound, we will see Phil Cope. As the Tigers turn to him in relief, Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, Phil Cope is your typical left-handed reliever. He can pitch anywhere in the game. He can give you multiple innings if you need it. His fastball is an average fastball, 92 to 94 miles an hour. Swing and a drive, deep left center. This one rolls through to the wall. There's the throw, and Rios comes in. Well, the pitching change doesn't pay off. The pitcher comes in. What happens? He gets welcomed by an extra base hit. That will extend this lead even further. Martian looking to knock in a run. Boy, this lineup is just pushing the pitching right now. It's tough to get anybody out. Well, as you can see, they're just pouring it on right now. They got out to an early lead, and the hits keep on coming. So do the runs. Swings and misses the slider. 0-1. And you do get feelings in these games, and the feeling right here is this thing is uh, out of reach. Well, we have to credit the hitters, certainly, but I think you have to put some blame on the pitching. They just did not get it done today. Let's see if they can put an end to this round. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching. It's going to be Knicks now. Here's the first pitch. Line to left, but that's going to go foul. I think he caught that thing. That was a rocket. Unbelievable. You look uh, for somebody to be injured on a play like that. Instead, you got a guy who caught the ball. That's why they're all right. patting him on the back, because he saved their lives. Now Laird sets the target. This is a swing hit in the air. 
And it is going to be a foul ball. Here's the delivery. And that's strike three, and mercifully so. Inning comes to a close, but big time damage done. So they strike for three more runs here and widen that lead even further. White Sox. And here's Miguel Cabrera to lead it off. Two for three thus far. Miguel Cabrera. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swing and a shot to third. So Cabrera is set down. Now look at the stats for the fewest walks allowed for the month. Found on our State Farm leaderboard. The White Sox number one. The Royals second. In third, the Rangers. Fourth, the Mariners. And for the Tigers, fifth. For the last few weeks, neither one of these teams are giving away free passes. They're making you earn it against them. And that's the way you have to pitch. And no team wants to have a guy come out and walk guy and walk guy and walk guy, and then you expect your defense to make a play behind you. Well, these defenses are prepared and ready to go because these pitchers are pounding the strike zone. Swung on, lying softly to right. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game on his fourth plate appearance. Just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way on that kind of pitch. Well, you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. One down, runner at first. The first pitch. And he lays it down. He'll try to beat it out. Peavy. Too late, and he is safe at second. There's a prime production opportunity for the Tigers. Well, he's trying to advance the runners with this bun. He's not bunting for a base hit, but once he got it down, he realized this is going to be a tough place. We hustled down the line. They couldn't get anybody out. Ground ball up the middle. It's gobbled up. There's one. On to first, safe. Can't get the back end of that one. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And here's the first one. This one's grounded near third. Foul. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Tried to get him to go after the slider. One and one. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, Listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdowns there. You only need four outs left to win this ballgame. Hit hard on the ground to short. Throws to first in time. That's three down. And Jake Peavy. He's heading in. Pitching deep. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. And it's Johnny Damon now. And this is bounced foul to the left side. He deals. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. Damon will foul that one away. Liner towards the hole. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. As much as you want to blame the pitching, we're now talking about more than one pitcher giving up all of these hits. You right now you have to credit the offense. These guys are really swinging the bat. Smashes that one towards the shortstop, and Everett brings that one in. Now State Farm brings you a look at the producers for this month, the most RBIs. Well, these are the guys that make the most money because they're the ones who impact the game in a big way, driving in the critical runs that lead to a team's success. And Paul Canerco to bat. He's had one hit four times up. And he starts Canerco out. And there's a called strike. Well, if there's ever been a time they needed a ground ball double play, it is right here. I mean, you cannot let this offense keep going. You've got it out. You've got a man on first base. Roll, roll two. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0-2. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity. Putt shot towards the hole. And Canerco's got himself a single. Now 
back. Well, this is getting ugly right, right now. I mean, he's given up hit right after field. hit after hit. This offense has clearly Point figured two. him out. How much longer can you leave him in to take a beating? Here it comes. And he gets this one by him on one. Second lifetime AB looking to go one for two with a hit off Coke. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Right. That's one out. And they get it. They turn two. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox eight. Tigers two. We get a look there at Jimmy Leland. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. They've decided it was time to make a change here. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. Do you want to take any chances? Manager decides to go to the pen. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. I think right now offensively, you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Slider just off the black that time, 2-1. and one. Here's the pitch. And that's in there to even us at 2. Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. Slider called third strike out number 1. Here's the slider coming right at you in KCAM. Get a better look at that. He fed him a fastball on that last pitch, John, and then locked him up with movement to finish him off. But did he ever? That was a great sequence. Show him the heat and then drop one right in on him the next pitch. And it's Everett batting. Nothing in two ABs against oh, Matt Thornton. Well, lost control of that last pitch. That puts a man on base. Well, he didn't throw this one where he wanted to as the ball just kind of moves in on the plate and gets a piece of the hitter. That'll bring Brandon in. Smash towards the hole. Let's take a look at Carlos Guillen. Well, you see the pitch coming to the inside part of the plate, but the hitter, a great inside-out approach, driving the ball to the opposite field. And with that kind of a cut, it may be impossible to get inside on that righty. Hey, lucky or good, either way, it's a great approach at the plate. And Carlos Guillen swings and misses. He's gone. Strike three. But a good, great confidence right there, and he's stuck. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. Here's the pitch. And with two strikes on him now, Cabrera needs to be protective of that zone. Oh, that's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Miguel Cabrera not fooled by that pitch. That'll even the count. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. Swung on, and that's foul back. The pitch. And that one is a fly ball. This could do it. Rios will field. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Now we'll look back at our Pepsi Clutch Performer. A terrific mound game, the work of Jake Peavy. Well, you know, Gary, he got touched for a couple runs, but that doesn't overshadow how great he was in this game. Anytime you can go that deep in the game and only give up those two runs and you can turn it over your bullpen, it's a manager's dream. And he delivered that performance today, and that's why his team got the big win. And Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Now, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans... They like the offensive explosion and the big win. Well, that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, John Truck, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.